astronomy GCSE topic 13 stellar spectra if you get white light like light from the sun and you put it through a prism or something called a diffraction grating then what happens is that the different wavelengths get separated and you can look at the different wavelengths which are there uh, you'll remember from GCSE if you put white light through a prism then you get Roy G Biv okay the different colors of the visible spectrum now what we can do is we can get the light from a star and we can put it through a prism uh, and on the end of our telescope and we can have a detector which will look at the different wavelengths which are present in that light and that is the spectrum of the star and what we see is that there are different types of star and they have different spectra. If you look at the spectrum of a star, uh, you, you get Roy G Biv, but you get a, a hump. Basically, you don't get the same amount of each wavelength. There's a particular wavelength where there's a maximum intensity. And this is very interesting. The position of this hump tells us the temperature of the star basically the the bigger the wavelength where the hump is then the cooler the star the smaller the wavelength where the hump is then the hotter the star so we get this hump okay uh, another very interesting and very useful thing is that there are black lines on the spectrum there are wavelengths which are missing and these are very important because they tell us what elements there are present in the star. We can actually figure out what the star is made from by looking at the, the position of these black lines. We call it an absorption spectrum. Uh, in 1814, Joseph von Fraunhofer found these black lines in the spectrum of light from our sun. I don't think he was the first person to see them, but he studied them uh, and he made lots of measurements of them. And later on, it was realized that these black lines in the spectrum of our sun tells us what elements there are in the atmosphere of the sun, which uh, was how helium was discovered. So what spectral types are there? What are the different types of star? O, B, A, F, G, K, M. The easiest way to remember it, very traditional way, O, B, A, fine girl, kiss me. Okay, and these are the different types of star. These different types of stars, you should learn the colors. The very hot ones up to 50,000 Kelvin are blue. The, the much, much cooler ones are red. The ones in the middle are kind of white and yellow. I think you should learn the temperatures here and you should learn the colors. Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. They are basically the seven different types of star. They appear different colors. They have different temperatures and they contain different elements as well. So the black lines are in different positions. Now, here's a, a picture of a constellation you should recognize. And there are the spectral types of some of the, the stars in Orion. Uh, the numbers after them is, is basically after each letter, there's a number from naught to nine. And the hottest ones are zero and the cooler ones are uh, cooler. Beg your pardon, bigger numbers. So uh, M naught would be hotter than M5, let's say. So there you see Betelgeuse is M1 and Rigel is B8, etc. Uh, Betelgeuse is a red supergiant M1. Rigel, a blue supergiant, is B8. Our sun is a G2 star. Obviously, it's not an Orion. One last thing to mention about these black lines, we'll talk more about this in another topic, is that if you look at the light from distant galaxies, this absorption spectrum, these black lines are shifted over to the red 
uh, and that's a kind of a Doppler effect thing and it's because these distant galaxies are moving away from us very fast. I'm sure you remember from your physics uh, redshift 